Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some big old breaking news now, really, really shaking some stuff up. We've had a massive trade. I know you already know about it, but I want to put my two cents in on that. Um, I guess kind of from a winners and losers standpoint, but mostly just from a what does this mean? What are the teams thinking? What does this tell us about what they kind of... And it, it, in a sense, it makes sense for all three teams. I, I think it makes a little bit more sense for some than others, but... This is what's cool about trades is it doesn't always have to be about winners and losers. It's about, you know, you want this and I want this. And so we trade, right? It's kind of like a bartering system. I've got a bunch. You know, I'm not going to get into my weird analogies. It's too early for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a good one, though. You would have loved it. Let's let's do this, though. Let's start with the 49ers. Um, if there had to be a team that I didn't like the trade for the most, it would probably be the 49ers. <sighs> Look, I, I mean, I, I again, I 100,000% get it. You want to win football games, and you're looking at your situation and saying, we can't win with this quarterback. I mean, we, we can win. It's just not a good enough situation, right? And I, and I Ian Rappaport, oh, we're not, we're not getting rid of our quarterback. <laughs> okay, right. There have been rumors for months that you're trying to dump Garoppolo and uh, trying to move on from him and getting guys, even including like Teddy Bridgewater. But, oh, no, we're going to keep him for sure. That's why we traded up to three. Give me a break. Um, here, here's two things I really am kind of iffy about. Number one is that you're moving up to three, which means you're just getting the third best quarterback. Now, obviously, they've gone to the pro days. They've done their homework. They've looked at it, and they said there's three quarterbacks we really, really like and believe can be the quarterback of the future, and they're probably right. Trevor Lawrence, you know you're not getting, but clearly that's a guy that you believe can do it. Um Zach Wilson, I, I, at this point, genuinely believe, especially with that pro day performance yesterday, that he will be the number two guy. He was arguably the best quarterback in college football last year, better than Trevor Lawrence. Um, and Justin Fields has been really a dominant quarterback for uh, three years running now. Um, and I saw somebody ask the question, what makes him better than all the other Ohio State quarterbacks? Literally everything. Um, that doesn't mean he's going to be good. I mean, there's good quarterbacks that bust out in the NFL, but he doesn't compare to the other quarterbacks. He's just heads and tails better than than all of them. Um, so again, they did their homework and they said, no matter who it is, we're happy with it. And there's an outside chance they're looking at Trey Lance. They want to get back to sort of the, the Colin Kaepernick days. I know this is different ownership, different coach, whatever, but they look at that style of quarterback and say, that would be fantastic for what we do. I doubt it. I think a Justin Fields would make perfect sense. You're, you're just getting a guy that is a really accurate distributor of the football that plays within the system, very intelligent, very accurate, and I think that's Justin Fields to a T. Um, so, again, I kind of get it, but it's still sort of this, you know, you guys let me know who we get. Dude, you traded away a lot of picks to sit there and go, you let me know who my quarterback is. Um, and, again, they probably have a decent idea of who that's going to be, but... Um, I, as, as a general rule, that, that kind of sucks a little bit, right? We're going to give away all this stuff, and I'm going to let the Jaguars and the Jets dictate who our future quarterback is. That isn't great. The other thing I, that, that at least worries me from a 49er standpoint is how much we're giving up. Um, we're giving up, and obviously, a third-round pick, and obviously we just swapped first, so I'm not going to worry about the 12, but the next two years' first-round picks is not a small thing, and, and I worry about following in the footsteps of teams like the Chicago Bears where we're close and we go all in. And obviously, if Justin Fields is very, very good, we can maybe get there. Um, but I worry about, you know, not not decline because of anything the 49ers are doing wrong. Every team does this. Every team gets older. Every team gets worn out. Every team gets, you know, guys get too expensive. You got to move on. Guys get too old. You got to move on. We're starting to lose some players. We know about the dire situation at cornerback. And I know 49ers fan. It's funny because when I talk about that here on the channel, most of the draft group 49ers fans are like, yeah, that kind of sucks. When I talk about it on Twitter, I get my head ripped off. I know you re-signed like two of the guys, but we still need more. Um, there's still an age issue. It's still just two, and most teams run with... Um, I actually went through because when people call me out, I do a lot of homework. That's how I do things. Um, most teams are running about six quarterbacks, and I'm talking about that actually play. I'm not talking about ones that sit on the bench and don't do anything. During the course of a season, about six different cornerbacks step on the field. Some of them are as low as, like, four, but still, two is obviously not enough. So cornerback is an issue. Offensive line is still an issue. I know we've done some work, but the age is becoming an issue, and, and et cetera, et cetera. There's still issues that we need to fix, 
and I worry about dropping a quarterback in a situation that things are starting to crumble around us, and we're, we don't exactly have the resources to keep up with all those things, and our, our cap situation is not going to be super great. Although, moving on from Garoppolo, bringing in a rookie quarterback may help that. Maybe that's what we do in the meantime. In fact, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm talking myself into this a little bit. As of right now, in 2022, according to Over the Cap, our team cap space is $29.5 million. Jimmy Garoppolo's cap hit for 2022, if we move on in 2022, is uh, $27 million, and only 1.4 of that is dead money, meaning we save 25.6. If we move on this year, we don't owe anything. We owe nothing. I don't know what is the situation. Yeah, it's... it's we can move on today. It costs us $2.8 million today and nothing. So that would be the full $27 million we save. So $27 million on top of basically $30. we are going to be flush with cash. So maybe that is the plan. We don't have the two first-round picks, but we've got a massive amount of money that we can use in the future with a rookie quarterback, and we can use that money to really build up around the guy that we have. And we, we got $20 million right now, which is not terrible if we want to do some little bits here and there, or we just carry it over. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a high-risk situation. You know, it, it, it's sort of a... You're kind of dependent on on free agency, and you gotta you gotta make some hits. But um, I mean, you got a great coach. You got to hit on the quarterback. But um, I think I think this could work. I, I I was a little skeptical, and again, I, I think it's a a win win win. But the 49ers are at the bottom of the pile. But it, it's kind of now that I look at the cap situation as a supplement to the two first round picks. Which again, you guys are gonna have a massive amount of cash. Not to mention you can recoup probably some value from Jimmy. I don't know if you're gonna get back one of the first round picks for Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe, but um, I mean, if you can do that, then you're talking about you're you're only losing one first round pick, and you got a billion dollars to play with. I. Uh, I talked myself into this one pretty quick. This this kind of makes sense. But again, it's all going to come down to getting the right quarterback. And I'm still, I'm still, even if, again, we love all the quarterbacks, it still sucks that it, you're letting other teams pick for you. I, I, you know, not that you can do any better than that, but it is what it is. As for the Philadelphia Eagles, um, I think the, the biggest thing for Philadelphia is the fact that they're kind of just embracing the rebuild. Um, and when you look at where they were picking, and I, I listen, I think the biggest issue I had when I did mock drafts and when fans do mock drafts is when you get into three, four, five, six, they love wide receivers and tight ends and stuff. And it's like, I just, I don't know about all that. And we'll talk more about that when, when we get to Miami, because that's a real big lesson in really understanding value. But, um, you know, for Philadelphia, it really just came down to, we'd rather have picks, you know, we would rather have picks and and help to rebuild what we have than sit here and, and we can we know at 12 we can still get somebody but um we just we we don't need whoever's going to be available at six more than we need those additional picks and and it's uh according to this year the dolphins traded the 12th pick and their 2022 first rounder to the eagles for the sixth overall pick so you're getting an additional first round pick that's pretty fantastic stuff um, obviously, the Dolphins have parlayed that into something pretty special. I doubt the Dolphins are going to give you a super high pick based on everything that they got going for them right now, but maybe. I mean, the Dolphins weren't exactly elite last year. They were decent, but um, who knows? Stuff can happen, and maybe you get a high pick out of it. But but it's hard to, you know, and, and again, we'll talk even more so about this when we get to Miami, but it's hard to say, would you rather have a 2022 first-round pick or Devontae Smith? Oh, and, and again, it's not Devontae Smith in a vacuum. It's Devontae Smith over, let's say, Jalen Waddell. Let's say you can get Jalen Waddell at 12. Would you rather have Jalen Waddell and a 2022 round, uh, first round pick or Devontae Smith? You're, you're going to take the, the first round pick. And again, even if it's not Waddell, okay, well, you got a, some great corners. You got Micah Parsons is probably still sitting there. You got Sertan. You've got, um, you know, offensive line. You got Quiddy Pay that's sitting there. You got Christian Darisaw that's sitting there. You got J.C. Horn and just just whoever, whatever, right? There's top tier value that's probably being pushed down because you got you know wide receivers and a tight end and quarterbacks that are flying off the board. So a lot of good value is still going to be pushed to you, and you're you're again you're kind of embracing that rebuild. 
And I think that's more important for the Eagles right now than to try to do, for example, what the 49ers are doing and saying, we're going to push in right now. Push in with what? You know what I mean? It's just, I mean, no offense, but Jalen Hurts and, and, and maybe he becomes something, but everything around that team is kind of crumbling down. The defense needs to be rebuilt. The offensive line that had that elite offensive line is just eroding. And um, they're doing the smart thing here. They're still going to get a great player. And uh, they, they ended up taking the Miami Dolphins who have just got, you know, first round picks galore. Like here, you can have one just for fun and let us move back up into six. And uh, so, so again, it makes sense. It's not going to be as fun for Eagles fans. They're probably a little bit, maybe they're upset, maybe they're not, I don't know. But whoever it is you're excited about at six wasn't worth giving up this new first round pick that you got. And I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you are excited, and you should be, because this was the right thing to do. Um, and again, there's still going to be good players. Whether or not you're going to pick the right one, I don't know. But there's going to be good players available. Um, so again, win-win. And then you come to Miami, and... Um, this one was was pretty fantastic, and he, here's the thing. There was a kind of a battle between, I guess, you and a lot of you and me. I'm sitting there at three, and I'm saying, listen, it's Penny Sewell or bust for me. Penny Sewell makes sense because he's a dominant, elite offensive tackle, once-in-a-generation type offensive tackle, and we can use him because we can use one of the tackles that was garbage last year and move him into guard because he played a lot of guard in college. I'm fine with that little shift, that little move. And he's a good value at three overall. A lot of you are saying, no, take a wide receiver. I don't want to do that. And and the thing is, when you say, to, you know, a wide receiver isn't the good pick to take at three, people are like, that's stupid. You know, Kyle Pitts or, or, or Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase or whatever, they're, they're super talented. They're totally worth it. Now that you understand the context, now that you understand what that pick is worth, that pick is worth a number 12 overall, a, a third round pick, a 2022 20, second, and a 2022 20, 20, third. Again, let me ask the question Would you rather have Devontae Smith or the number 12, a 2021 20, uh, third, a 2022 20, first, and a 2023 20, first? And here's the, here's the kicker here's the cheat code. If you give back the 2022, 20, which they did to the Eagles, you're probably still getting Devontae Smith. So it just goes to show you that it was it was not ever going to be the right thing to do to take Devontae Smith here. It's not a good value. You can get Devontae Smith later and recoup a first-round pick, a third-round pick, and swap first-round picks. So, um, again, it's, just, it's, it's, it's good to see the trades because then you understand the full value of it, and then you attribute that to a player and say, man, I, that's when you look at it and say, only a guy like Justin Fields, right? And and maybe he's not very good, I don't know. But the point is, only a guy that you think is going to be the next quarterback for our team to lo- lead us into the next 20 years of domination, the next Pat Mahomes, the next Deshaun Watson, whatever. Those are the guys that you're taking at three, right? Penny Sewell, only if he's going to be an elite left tackle, right? Because those guys are, are invaluable. Um, but I'm not taking Jamar Chase with the third pick. I'm not taking Devontae Smith. No chance. I'm going to trade back. And again, the the Miami Dolphins were fantastic because they essentially, after their trade back up, um, they went from the third pick to the sixth pick. So they moved back three places and they recouped a third round pick and a 2023 first round pick. And they're still going to get whoever they wanted anyways. There's a chance, depending on what happens here, that they still get Penny. Uh, no, they're not going to get Penny Sewell at, uh, because the Bengals are sitting there. But in the simulator I did, the Falcons took Penny Sewell, which means Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Dev- uh, Devontae Smith, all still available. Even if the Falcons or, or somebody takes one of these wide receivers, and you know the Bengals are going to take Penny Sewell, that means, okay, they took Jamar Chase, we still get Devontae Smith. We still get Kyle Pitts. Um, if they take Kyle Pitts, we still, you know you know what I'm saying? We're still going to get him. And we, ad- we got an additional first-round pick, so it's just... Um, it was almost a no-brainer. I mean, they had to get out of that spot. And um, I think, again, the complication and why they... I, I think what you had was the Dolphins really wanted to move out of that spot, but they didn't want to go too far back. And, and the 49ers really wanted to move up, so they had to bring a third party in. So they started calling other teams to see if there was any kind of a three-way trade they can do, and that's where they found the Eagles, where, um, for example, the Eagles and 49ers probably would have been willing to do a trade, but the 49ers are like, that's not good enough. I, I need to be up higher. So then they worked out that three-way trade where essentially the Dolphins and Eagles would swap, 
and then the Dolphins and, uh, excuse me, the 49ers and Eagles would swap, and then the 49ers and Dolphins would swap. So they, they worked out that three-way trade where everybody kind of got what they wanted, where you got the Dolphins and the Eagles getting picks. Um, you have the Dolphins still up high. You got the Eagles saying, eh, it's fine. And then you've got the 49ers giving up a lot of, of compensation to be able to get the quarterback of the future. And again, still should be relatively okay. They're going to probably be pretty aggressive in free agency in the near future. Um, and uh, that's that's going to be not only exciting for you guys, but 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 a good thing to help build around the quarterback. So um, and, and maybe they don't move them this year. Maybe they do hang on to them and, and, and they kind of ease Justin Fields in. And you get that sort of competition thing um which wouldn't surprise me considering they're already coming out saying jimmy garoppolo's our guy which obviously is a joke but they may want to play him this year which is maybe why they're saying that because they don't want to get him upset because they know there's a good chance that he may need to be the starter at least for half the season or maybe even the entire first season i don't know it's going to be a massive disappointment if that happens but it does happen from time to time um at least kind of getting justin acclimated and kind of having jimmy there to, to coach up justin not that he would do that but by virtue of just practicing obviously justin's going to learn a lot from jimmy um but anyways again it's, it's a three-way trade that i think really does work out for everybody um the eagles again got the raw end of the deal in terms of the least exciting because it's a trade back and nobody really thinks that that's a, that's that exciting but getting that that 2022 first is is awesome and you're still at 12 going to end up getting somebody you know, that's that's going to be pretty awesome. In fact, I think if you are really excited about Devontae Smith or whoever, although you're not going to get them anymore, you're still going to get somebody because you look at it and you say, okay, let's say that this plans out. I, I got this simulator up right here. So if the Falcons take Panay Sewell, the Bengals take Rashawn Slater, let's say the, uh, who are we going to pick here? Um, I don't know. Miami takes, uh, We'll go with the board here, which I guess is Jamar Chase. So Jamar's gone. And then, um, hold on, pause this, because I don't think, well, I'll let it run out, but stop. All right, so according to this, the Lions took Devontae Smith. The Panthers took Trey Lance. Maybe. Maybe that's the case. I don't. I think it's possible that the Lions take a quarterback. But either way, you got Trey Lance getting mixed in, which means we get additional push down. Um but by the time the Eagles had picked, you've got Caleb Farley, Christian Derrissaw, Kyle Pitts, which I don't think Kyle Pitts makes it. But again, okay, so Kyle Pitts is gone, meaning somebody else gets pushed down. Maybe Patrick Sertan gets pushed down. Jalen Waddell is a very good possibility if, if, if Kyle Pitts kind of, you know, pushes everybody down. Jalen Waddell may be available, which is a pretty nice consolation prize. So again, you're going to get somebody that's, that's still pretty exciting. Um, doesn't mean he's going to be good. And actually, the, the number 12 overall pick, unfortunately is kind of, um, I did a, a little bit of a project myself where I looked back at former picks and their PFF grades and when they were picked and kind of just tracked it out. And the first really big drop happens at 12. So that, that kind of sucks a little bit, but it doesn't have to go that way. You just got to find the right player. Obviously, there's going to be good players available. You just got to pick the right one. But um, pretty exciting stuff here. We're, we're kind of getting stuff moving and it, it doesn't have to be done yet. Jimmy Garoppolo may still be traded. Again, I kind of doubt it because they're acting like they're going to, you know, hang on to them for a while but but you can move them anytime and it's not going to cost you anything it's going to save you a ton of money next year um and we'll see if anybody else is looking to uh to make some moves to trade around and, and do some fun stuff i'm excited man the draft season is in full swing and um i'm planning on doing a new mock draft we'll we'll get it going here and i'll have a video ready about uh, the new order and kind of how that had, makes things work out because i haven't fully fleshed that out but uh Anyways, thanks for checking out the video. Make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell notification for more exciting things to happen and whatnot. I don't know, man. I'll talk to you later.